Hi, this is Jessica Damasa, and I'm here with Jonathan Simons from the IASD. He's the CMO. Tell us a little bit about IASD. What do you guys do? So we build machine intelligence software for providers and for payers in the healthcare space. All right, so um, we talked a little bit earlier. Your client, you told me, is a mix of payers and providers. What are these guys doing with the AI and the deep machine learning that you're providing them? Yeah, so it's really interesting. At this point, um, after a huge implementation phase for EMRs and for storage, um, healthcare companies across the payer and the provider space have a tremendous amount of data and they're trying to extract more value out of those investments. And so AI is actually a very natural fit for that because the problem space has become so large and so complex that they're looking to tackle really, really big problems value-based care type of problems where you want clinical variation management to understand what are all the elements that come up with uh, an ideal care path for a surgery or for a long-term care issue, and then also what are the elements within population uh, risk and population health that you need to understand in order to figure out who's going to accelerate from one bucket to the next. These are really complex problems, they're chronic problems for healthcare, yeah. and AI is really well suited to serve them. You know, we've been hearing a lot about that, and it seems like you know, two years ago AI just, you know, big on the scene, everybody's like, oh my God, the potential is amazing. And then it's like last year we started seeing a few companies, and now this year it seems like we've got quite a few more who are really dug in and have some actual like case study examples. So is it working the way that we hoped it would work, or are we failing? Yeah, no, I think it is working the way it, it, it should work. Um, I think AI in the past number of years was defined more by its failures than by its successes. And I think that we're entering a phase now where over the last year you've seen AI defined more by its successes, but they've been small successes, small wins. Like where, for example? So for example, the work that we've done with Intermountain around um, using AI to come up with ways to uh, reduce punctures for uh, federal infants. Um, how we've used uh, AI to help um, a large integrated uh, payer come up with what is the population risk that they really want to be focused on in intervening and, and interdicting with. Now, I mean, real quick there, because I mean, this is one of the things, and I, maybe it's our impatience, yeah. you know, as innovators. It's like, we want this to take hold and we want to go like straight to the moon with it. But it's like, why are these small wins so significant? Because I mean, the, the immediate response a lot of people will say is like, okay, that's great, but how are you going to scale that? Yeah. So I think the thing is we have to remember that this is medicine, right? And you have to have every box checked if you're going to operationalize one of these solutions. And part and parcel with that is you have to be able to explain exactly what it is the machine's doing. Because if we're talking about impacting lives, you have to have this level of explainability that goes far beyond what really passes for explainability in the AI world. And so that will slow it down by, by nature, but it delivers better outcomes because now the community, the clinicians, and the practitioners and the doctors can get behind this. And it really takes it from the practice of medicine to the science of medicine. And that's what AI's real promise is going to be over the next number of years. So tell me what your thoughts are, your company's thoughts from your vantage point um, about these big tech companies like the Apples and the Googles and the Amazons of the world that are you know, masters at AI and using it in different ways. Are we welcoming them into health or what do you think? Is this going to change things in, in the way that it needs to be changed? What are your thoughts? So it's a great question. It's a great question. And I would tell you the jury's out on that. If, if we really knew the answer to that, I think that it, we'd have that conversation right now. But I, my sense is that they have talent and they have technology that goes far beyond what you generally find inside of a payer or a provider. Even though that they are very data aware by their nature, they don't necessarily have the data science talent that an Apple has, for example. What I do think is that they will move the ball forward and they will provide the art of the possible. And that's going to be motivating for uh, just a whole generation of clinicians and a whole generation of administration for these uh, these companies to do more with what they have because they possess a tremendous amount of data. Yeah. When you think about the ability to now have genomics for almost every single patient, that's a huge opportunity and they're just starting to scratch the surface. I was going to ask you about AI in terms of like in healthcare. You know, it's like every time there's a new technology, we're so hot on it right away. And then yeah. it's like we have our two, a few years where we get used to it. And then it's like, boom, every other company you stumble over is in that field. And it's starting to feel like that a little bit for AI. It's getting crowded. Is this the next telemedicine? Is this the next cloud-based EMR? Yeah, it's a great question. Listen, we've been at this for a long time. And so the AI washing that we've seen over the last year mm -hmm. has been a little rough from our perspective because we're like, golly, those guys aren't doing AI. They're just, they were doing 
doing predictive two years ago and they're still doing predictive. And, faux and, AI. Uh, exactly, <laughs> exactly, it's faux AI. So listen, if you want to do AI and you're a provider or a payer and you want to evaluate companies, there's a framework that Google uses, that Baidu uses, that, that we use as well. And that is that company needs to be able to do unsupervised learning, so to be able to find patterns and relationships in data without having to ask any questions. Right? Okay. Then you need to be able to do supervised, which is the predictive stuff. Yep. And by the way, predictive does better when you have unsupervised learning. You have to be able to justify exactly what it is the machine did. Because you won't be able to operationalize it if you can't. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to build applications on top of that technology, because applications are what goes in front of the clinician when they're interacting with a patient yeah. and giving them that feedback. And so the UI is an incredibly important part of that. Mm -hmm. And then finally, that application needs to be in the operational workflow and needs to be able to live in the operational workflow from an enterprise scale perspective, because if it can do that, it's going to get smarter over time. An application that's not getting smarter over time is actually getting dumber over time. And we're in the business of building intelligent applications, not you know, unintelligent applications. So that's the, the that's the framework that you should look at. Okay. And last question for you. Yeah. So <laughs> we're asking everybody for their WTF health moment. Yeah. Okay. And for that we mean what's the future? So yeah. what's the future for AI and health? How are we going to make this better? Because I know we've all had lots of WTF moments otherwise in healthcare, right? Yeah. And you can tell us about one of those too if you'd like. But what's the future for AI you think in health? So I think AI's great promise over the next five years is that it's going to be able to accelerate the process of understanding exactly what's going on with your patient and give you potential paths and outcomes. And that is going to be far more accurate than a doctor could do otherwise because it's going to be able to integrate and synthesize far more data points than otherwise. And I think that's a great promise. To suggest that you're going to have doctors, uh, robots treating you as your doctor, that's not going to happen in five years. But in five years, you're going to have this ability to really transform just that practice of care and turn it into a science. Awesome. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for joining Absolutely. us here. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Great. Thank you for hosting us in your booth. You <laughs> All right, great. Thanks. This is Jessica DeMassa. We'll talk to you soon.